Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this episode we're going to look at a classic race car an MGA from 1958. We'll have a chat about the MGA we'll then talk shortly about the history of this specific race car and then we're going to do the damage assessment and see how much it will cost me to actually repair this car. The MGA was built between 1955 and 1962. It was the first modernized car that MG had after the T-Series. And it was also the last one that actually was having a chassis. After that, they moved on to the MGBs, which were all about a monocoque. When the MGA was built, they continued to build the cars with a chassis, a frame structure underneath, and then the body was put on top. Later on, when the MGA was abandoned, they moved to the MGB, and this is an MGB GT, and this was the first monocoque that an MG produced. The MGA was delivered with three engine types, the 1.5 liter developing around 68 horsepower, the 1.6 liter developing around 79 horsepower, and then the very famous twin cam 1.6 liter developing about 110 horsepower. Now imagine in 1958, 110 horsepower for a very light car, which is only about 800 kilograms. The top speed was about 165 kilometers an hour or about 100 miles an hour. The MGA is an American export. It started its life in Texas in the US until 2013 when it was bought by a Dutchman and then shipped and imported into Europe, into the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, it was then converted into a classic race car and you'll see all the changes that have made to the car and we will go through this. And then a person bought this car and started to race with the car for about 10 years or so until he had an accident very recently in 2023, where he damaged the car very badly and he decided not to race anymore because of his age. And the car was then sold to a collector in France, a Paul's classic uh, garage. And he has a lot of cars, that guy. So if you ever are in France, have a look at Paul's classic cars. It's a huge place. So I spotted the car not that long ago on Race Cars Direct. I have to say, I didn't go very high in price. It was a low price I did bid. And to my surprise, uh, Paul agreed to sell the car to me. And here it is. As you can see, it's missing a couple of fenders. And that's because of the crash. On the other side, I'm also missing the rear fender. So let's push it outside so you can have a better look. And then we're going to push it into the workshop and do the full damage assessment on this car. As you can see, it's been racing in several races. And the last one it really participated in was the Spa Summer Classics in 2023. So before you buy a race car that has had a crash, you really need to have a deep check before you put your money down, making sure that the chassis is not hit. And of course, that is a bit hard sometimes, but that's why you should try a test ride with it, if it can. Of course, if the front direction or the front steering is hit, you won't be able to. If one of the wheels is hit, then you won't be able to drive it. But still do a good inspection underneath the frame and see if the frame is straight. Now this car, um, I had a test ride with it already and that was running really nice. So mechanically the car is good, but it has some issues with the bodywork. So the only repair I have on this car is really all about bodywork. Let me drive it into the barn and then we can put it on the lift and have a look what we need to do on this car. So we got the car now in the barn and now we're going to do an inspection all around the car and figure out how much expenses I have and what I have to do to get this car back on the track. It's important to have a safety cage certificate on any race car that you intend to race with and I have everything on this car which is really a bonus. Everything is well documented on how it was built because you need to have that before you can actually have that certificate. You noticed as well that the number is the same number that we have found on the actual roll bar or the cage and it's all signed off. So I'm happy with this. Now, the first thing you need to do when you buy in a race car is to make sure 
that the chassis is still straight. Of course, that is if it's not a monocoque, but if it's a monocoque car, you've got to make sure that that monocoque or the chassis is not damaged because if it is, then you're up for a lot of work. Now on this car, I think it's okay, but let's have a look. Buying a classic race car from somebody you don't know online can be very tricky, especially if the car has crashed before. Now this car underneath looks really tight. This looks like very well maintained. Um, springs are all good, but let's have a look actually now on the chassis frame, how that looks like. So here we have the frame of the MGA and it goes all along to the edge, but this frame looks like all brand new and I see no damages on it. I'm looking at the frame here and there's a frame on the left and the right hand side on the outer side of the MGA. And this frame looks like brand new. It's not bent, it's not rusty, not corroded, not welded up where it shouldn't be welded up. So that looks really, really good. So. Let's check the other side as well, and then we check the front end. And that runs along nicely. No dents, no nothing, no cracks or anything. So that is really good. And everything looks very straight underneath. It's welded up proper. I think this was completely uh, rebuilt at the time. So that all looks real good. And here we have the front cross member. That is also very, very good. So um, let me give you a little bit of a close up on this. So this is the continuation of the frame. And you can see that this is in a good, 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 good condition. Nothing is bent at all on the suspension. So here we have the Jesse, which is coming from the back to the front. And it's a nice curve. It's not damaged, not bent. And it's the same thing on the other side. All right, so uh, let's have a look here. So this is the right-hand side where the fender was totally destroyed. And honestly, steering house is good intact. Nothing wrong with that. This whole frame is good, or the subframe. The wishbones are in a real good condition. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it even has very recent springs. Um, and the other side, well, it's... Um, very much the same. So overall, I don't think there's anything wrong with this chassis. And if you look at the overall condition of these frames, I mean, they look like in perfect condition. They're not rusted, well painted, no play on it. So this car was really in a good condition before it crashed. We've got a good sway bar in the front, pretty solid and well attached not damaged and you might notice that we have two oil coolers that's kind of interesting uh, but hey why not uh, we'll see once uh, we start driving this car what it's going to do so the rear axle is in a good condition the springs are good it all looks good no leaks and the differential is a limited slip differential from Mowag. so the gas tank looks like the original mga gas tank and that's something i'm going to change because i'm going to swap this out with a cell inside the trunk uh, although i do think that this gas tank is filled up with foam because that is required if you were to race with these cars so in the back in the back of the rear valance we've got a nasty um, cut here but this part we can fix or we replace it but what is more important is this bar in the back here, and that is still straight. There is no damage on it. So if that would have been the case, I would have worried about it, but this is just sheet metal, so not a big deal. Chassis. So, so far I have seen nothing wrong with this car. The chassis looks intact. Everything is very tight underneath. I think there was no money spared on this car when they prepared it for racing. Now let's look at some of the other areas where we do have work on the body. I also check the brakes, check the wheels, the tires, and some other small stuff. So let's carry on. This black beam is still part of the frame. And you can see where the springs are attached. Everything is untouched, which is good. But we have lots of damage right here. That's where the car has been hit in the back. And it's a nasty dent. Uh, this is actually where the, the neck is for the fuel. But I'm not going to need this anymore afterwards. But you can also see the bonnet sticks out a bit. 
So this whole part needs to be come up a bit. We need to pull it out because it's been bent in. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this because I'm not a pro in body work, but I, I can try. Um, I might remove the welds and then try to straighten all that up little bit by little bit. I'm quite sure it will work. And after all, this is a race car. It is not a showroom car. But still, I like to have it fixed properly. You can also see that the rear valance is, is really bent. <clears throat> the door on the right hand side is having a serious big bend in it. I think I will be able to remove it. And if not, I may have to reskin the door. Let's see if we can open it up. But the upper bar here is bent. I think we can get this straightened out um, without too much of a hassle. And if need be, we'll have to reskin the door. So we have an AFF fire extinguisher installed, which is still valid until 2025. So no need for me to change this one right now. On the left-hand side, the rear fender is still intact. There's no damage on that, except a bit of damage from stones. The door is in a good condition, so we don't need to do anything. The only thing we're missing is the front fender, but I have those already available. Well, we got a little cute taillight. So unfortunately, I only have the one on the left-hand side. The one on the right-hand side is gone because of the accident, so we'll have to buy a new one or get rid of this light altogether and put some other lights up. I don't know yet, I might want to keep it original and just get this light. The rims are really looking good all around the car, so there's no damage on any of them, not in the back and not in the front. Tires, well, I don't worry too much about the tires because that's something we can't replace, but these are still looking good, so, and I don't think they are that old, I just need to check the date, but I'll do that later uh, because um, there's still other things to be done. So now we are back at the front and on the right hand side, we've got a pretty nasty dent. So this one is something we need to get out. We need to take the grill off. Hopefully we can get it out. If not, I may cut it out and then later weld it back on again and straighten this out either on the English wheel or I just get a replacement part for the a repair part for the front side here. That will work all fine. It also needs to be lifted up a bit. Now, if you look on this car with the fenders removed, look how clean that is, how well all this is painted. There is absolutely no rust. So the previous owner really did a good job on all this. He really did uh, repair this car very, very well. So we are missing the fender here, but we also need to have this stone guard in here. And I've seen him laying in the back of the trunk, but we may have to rebuild some of those because they look a bit tacky. So now let's have a look on the inside and on the engine compartment and see what kind of damage we have there, if any. So the seat is a Sparco seat, a Sprint seat in good condition. Although the seat belts are from Altec, they have expired, I noticed in 2025. So let's see. Yeah, oh no, and not valid after 2024. So I'm still good this year, but after that we will have to replace those. On the dashboard, there's no real issue. Everything looks all right. Um, there's a contact switch right here that you cannot start otherwise. There's a main breaker switch right here. As you can see, you can hear the fuel pump. And it starts like a champ, so that's all good. The only thing I might want to change is the steering wheel. It has a bit of play on it. I don't like that. And I think I like to have a removable one. The rear bonnet has some scratches, so that will need repainting, but for the rest, it is intact. So let's have a look inside. And here we have a lot of the junk in it. From the actual crash, right? So. Oh, look, I did find the old uh, light. That's, that's good. Uh, I'm going to need these. Uh, that's the leftover of the previous fender. Uh, this must be the little light in the front. All good to have because 
all these parts cost money. But at the inside, this looks uh, very, very clean. Yep, and there's no real damage up here. I And the damage we have, we could probably push out if that was needed. We just need to check on that. Yeah, they will have to be pushed out a bit uh, because it's way too much in, but we've seen that before. So we can do that. That should be not a major issue. So let's have a look on the engine. So engine, well, very typical MGB engine. So it's not an MGA, but an MGB engine. I think it's been tuned to uh, 1950. We'll find that out later. I'm not going to open it up right now because it runs like a champ. We got an aluminum radiator with an electrical fan. We've got a DCOE 45 carp from Weber with small ram pipes. I might want to change that a bit to have a better air ducting. I mean, there's an air ducting coming in here from the front, but I might want to extend that tube more forward. We also got a electronic ignition. The module is right here. Yeah, here it is the module. So that's already a good sign. And it starts very well. We got the race alternator. And um, yeah, most of the stuff is present, I would say. We got the spill tank, both for the radiator and the uh, engine fumes. Uh, so that's good and easy to be removed, I hope. Not that easy. Oh yeah, you just need to undo this tie wrap. I got the expansion tank uh, for the um, cooling system. And all that looks, um, yeah, quite all right. And it seems that we have a real proper dual circuit braking system. Again, essential for driving on the circuit. You have to have that. So braking in the front, braking in the back. So dual circuit, looking good. And that's basically it uh, concerning the engine. We don't need to do much more on this for now. And the suspension on this car is both in the front and in the back, very traditional, um, with these swing shock absorbers and springs. Not a coilover, not allowed uh, in most of these races. So certain things you need to keep original. So I'm going to keep this for now at least. And then we'll see what happens later. What I noticed is that I'm only going to need some body parts and a lot of hard labor to get all these dents out. I need two new front fenders. I need one new rear fender. And all the rest, I think I will be able to fix it. I may have to add a door skin. And I may have to add a repair piece for the front and a repair piece for the back. Now, the fenders I do have, the fenders that I'm going to put up are polyester fenders to reduce the weight. And it is allowed where I intend to raise the car. So that is not an issue. So here I have the polyester fenders for the front and the back. And I'm almost sure I'm going to put those back up. We'll paint them in red and correct them where they need to be corrected because they have a little bit of damage here and there. In some races, you're not allowed to have that, and you have to have the full metal fenders. Not in my case. Now, luckily for me, I got all the fenders already, because the guy I bought it from, Paul, uh, also has given me the polyester fenders, so that should be easy. Most of the work will actually be straighten up that bodywork to have these fenders fit properly. If I have to buy a door skin and I have to buy that front repair piece and a rear valance and a front valance, because I haven't looked at the front valance, I think it's going to be another 2,000 euros for those parts uh, to put it all up. And then the paint job, of course. But the paint job I do myself in my own paint boot, so that is going to cost me probably about another three, 400 euros just for the paint and all the materials. So all by all, I think I can get this car back in a good running condition for about two and a half grand of euros, and which is, which is really good. If I add the price I bought the car for, 
then I'm still sitting well below the value of cars like this because this car is really uh, well built. All right. Now, in terms of bodywork, this area is most likely the worst one. You can see this is bent, so the whole thing has come in a little bit, so I need to pull out all this as much as I can. There's a little dent there or crack there as well, so really this is going to be a bit of pulling, but I think I will be able to put a ram jack in and ram this out a bit, and it will work at the end. It has to work. Let's have a look on the brakes in the back and in the front. <coughs> So in the back we have these big drum brakes and this is what you have to have in this race class. You cannot put disc brakes up in the back. I know they exist but you're not allowed to do so. So let's have a look what state these brake pads are in our shoes. And now that should come off. That looks pretty clean. Brake shoes are still adequate enough. All right. I'm going to readjust it so I don't make no mistakes. And I think the front discs are looking still pretty much all right. Um, they are still thick enough. They have no edges, not really grooved, no signs of overheating. And the brake pads are still thick enough on both sides. So for now, this all looks good. We've got good quality stainless steel and forced brake hoses. In the next episode, we're going to fix the front right side and then we do the back side which is the more difficult side. And then we will trial fit the fenders on and see how it goes. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and keep watching because more videos coming on this car. Thank you for viewing. Bye bye.